An educational comedy. It's not a cause. Not a movement. It's not a social group you can slap a label on. It's an idea. It's an intention. It's an intuition. A mindset in which reality can be explored. It's a genuine expression. So critical thinking and imagination. To look inward upon ourselves. To better understand the external world around us. And yes, we egos are bound to be bruised. With our silly, strange, politically incorrect. Your own adult style of going about things. Real, Real and raw honesty. honesty. Which invites you to be to the fullest. In the age of information, as data bandwidth continues to increase and paradigms collide at breakneck speeds, there is an epiphany that is reached, which is as liberating as it is aggravating. That no matter what you do or how you do it, no matter what you say or how you say it, no matter how polite and respectful you might attempt to be, no matter how many approved societal protocols and procedures you adhere to, you will inevitably fail to gain everyone's approval. You will inevitably fail to avoid people's disapproval. There is a mind-boggling long list of things you cannot and will not ever have any control over and therefore any endeavors to attempt to gain this control are fated as doomed before we even begin those tasks. Haters will hate. Nothing you can do about that. Some people just aren't happy unless they just aren't happy. There is nothing you can do about that. Some people believe that all humans are inherently evil and ultimately can do no good and are selfish betrayers. In their view, this includes you. Some people will be perverted and view everything around them as perversion, as everyone is accused of being a pervert. Nothing some people do for themselves is ever enough to satisfy them. So surely there isn't anything you could ever hope to do or say that satisfies them either. As this list goes on and you review it in your mind's eye, as the profound revelation that attempting to control how other people view you is infinitely hopeless, Inspiration sparks a clear-minded inquiry. What then is within my control? What then can I change? What then is not fated as hopeless? Where might I succeed in a world that is a setup to make me fail no matter what I might do? The answer is challenging to wrap one's mind around because it is so profoundly simple. Society has taught us that nothing can be simple or easy, and we have been raised to believe this lie. Hence, the challenge the mind faces in attempting to process the answer. Humans have something called an advanced frontal lobe, the free will center of the brain which allows you to completely dismiss all external data and choose to believe in something completely different. Something that contradicts the view of reality we've been indoctrinated with. Without this function, we would all still be living in caves and huts. There would be no invention, no technology, no philosophy, no art, no music, and quite frankly, no nothing. These facts lead to the simple answer. You get to choose what kind of person you are. 
You get to choose how you feel about things. You get to choose what to think about things. You get to choose what to believe about things. And just as it is a hopeless endeavor for you to try to control the thoughts and beliefs of others, it is equally a hopeless pursuit for anyone to try to control you. Once you have your mind made up and you have decided to refuse to be manipulated any longer. Suddenly, there is a clarity that is reached. Now you know how to separate the temper tantrums from the logical data. You can see the hidden wisdoms embedded in the yammerings of fools. The wisdom they don't even know is there. You begin to see how just like the spark creates the forest fire, very simple actions on your part can create profound wide-scale impact. The mind is blown as you watch it happen. You begin to see your power. You begin to see how it has always been determined individuals, not the masses, who have created the most profound changes in history. The masses will always reject change. At least, they will until humanity becomes more mature, which may or may not be within your lifetime, as the awakening of humanity is speeding forward like a bullet out of a gun, metaphorically speaking. With the knowledge of how to become the change you want to create, also comes the understanding that without also respecting the rights of others to think, feel, and believe as they wish, that the only thing you will create is a self-deception where you are pretending to yourself that you have changed. The shift from judging others to respecting the rights of others is a journey over time. It is pointless to beat yourself up over the fact that no human can snap their fingers and make this shift instantly any more than a ship would jump from sea to sea over the landmass surrounding the Panama Canal. As you make this journey over time, those who would deem themselves as your adversaries will unwittingly and unintentionally become your greatest and most important benefactors. Given what comes next, this may appear counterintuitive at first. But the paradox you are about to experience will be cleared up for you very shortly thereafter. They will put you through a hazing process that will continue to provide you with greater strength and self-confidence. Just as lifting weights may be a bit painful at first, the inevitable end result is an increase in strength. Your kindness will be viewed as creepy. Your compassion will be viewed as contempt. Your pragmatism will be viewed as delusional. Your artistic imagination will be viewed as dangerously wasteful. Your respect will be viewed as condescending patronization and belittlement. Your generosity will be viewed as fraud. Your passionate expressions will be viewed as overthinking as you navigate a narrow-minded world of useless one-liners and irrelevant popularity contests. The consensus of others against you will be of kin to the chickens electing the wolves to vote on what will be served for dinner. Though their consensus is irrelevant, they will mistake childish popularity contests for logic and reason. In a universe which thrives on diversification, they will claim that a conformist norm somehow exists and that you are somehow foolish for violating it. They will view your inquisitive curiosity as troublemaking and meddling. Your genuine honesty and integrity will be perceived as rudeness. These and more will be the reflections of all of the judgments you have also been taught to hold against yourself as the internal battle inside you rages simultaneously to the matching experiences in the external world. As you clear out your internal mess of paradigms, 
the external world will become like that of a graphical user interface, such as a computer desktop, metaphorically. The external will reflect your internal progress. The external will act as your own personal measuring stick. How this works is not difficult to understand, and will clarify how the hazing process is extremely beneficial and is nothing to be feared. To quote Will Smith, do not misunderstand me. Danger is real, but fear is a choice. As you continue to shed your old habits and develop better ones, the changes on the external are as profound and obvious as the changes that happen when you change a cake recipe even slightly. We already understand that even the slightest change to the proportions of ingredients, the end resulting cake will change dramatically. Reality is a cake, not a light switch. We do live in a world which employs light switch thinking, and this also makes the contrast into a very efficient measuring stick. It is easy to see the difference between a cake and a light switch, especially seeing as one will give you a much bigger stomach ache if you eat it. Genuine respect for other people's rights to think, feel, believe, and express is paramount. It has to come from the very core of your heart and soul. It cannot merely be an intellectual tactic of semantics that is used as a strategy to ward off other people's attempts at energetic vampirism. This is a house of cards that will quickly crumble within the hazing process. This is because the most patronizing, condescending, rude, and insulting thing you can do to any other human being is to respect their freedom to have their point of view and perspectives equal to your own right to do the same. From their point of view and perspective, they do not have a point of view or perspective. In their eyes, they have the one and only immutable and unchanging absolute facts of the universe. If you look at it from their perspective, telling them that they have the right to their opinion sounds to them as it would if someone walked up to you and said, I respect your right to think you're a human being, but I already know that you are in fact a cute, cuddly bunny rabbit. Wouldn't that sound delusional to you? Of course it would. You know for a fact that you are a human being, not a bunny rabbit. So if I try to explain to you that genetically on a DNA level, humans and rabbits are more closely related than you might think, would this sound silly? Perhaps? Perhaps not. All actions have consequences, but humans rarely take actions based on facts. This makes facts irrelevant, which is a very offensive thing for me to say in an apathetic world that deems being right as more important than learning from mistakes and treating others fairly. We do live in a world where arrogant egos and addiction to feeling justified has ruled supreme for thousands of years. Never forget that. So how does all of this actually make growth through the hazing process easier? Simple. If you are genuinely respecting the rights of others from the very core of your heart and soul, then there is absolutely nothing they can do or say that will faze you. You will be like a mountain, and they will be like an ant trying to move it. All of their attempts to try to shift your mind to conform to their way of thinking will continue to fail. They will become aggravated and continue to waste larger amounts of energy in shorter periods of time. Like an 800 pound man trying to run as fast as he can down the block. After all is said and done, you will be shunned, deemed as a waste of their time. The very thought of you will disgust them. They will be like a kid in a candy store, but all of the candy is sold out. First they will cry, then they will go look for another store. They will look for someone else to manipulate. Understand 
that the ego-driven manipulator external to you represents the one you have inside of you, the false ego, the societal indoctrination. The true ego, or good ego, works with the higher centers of the brain. Love, compassion, logic, rationality, artistic expression, imagination, invention, and so on. It allows you to identify yourself as an individual part of a greater whole. It is an aspect of being sentient and self-aware. The false ego is what we've all learned from school and society. The pathological control freak. The insecure, fearful neurosis. That which works with the lower centers of the brain, the more primal brain. When we face the illogical fear of being forever alone and abandoned that society has programmed us with in a collective case of Stockholm Syndrome as we feel that without the attention of our oppressors we will be fated to be miserable and live a life of boredom and sadness. When we allow both our internal and external oppressors to liberate us through their shunning and abandoning of us, something wonderful happens. At this point, the only people worth dealing with are the only people who want to deal with us. Anyone else quickly runs the hell away from you once their tantrums are completed. You need not suffer the monotony of the external oppressor nor the internal one which the external represents. You will be surrounded by people who contradict everything you were taught to believe. People whom you have thought cannot exist. People who accept you for who you are in both your best and worst moods and moments. Because now at this point, you have ceased to be an oppressor of others. You have stepped off the hamster wheel of apathy. So, fuck appeasement. Just be you to the fullest. And you will create change that you don't even know you are capable of creating. Your potential is limitless, whether you know it or not. But potential is like a book on the shelf. Knowledge is not power in and of itself. It's only power when it's applied.